Hi, everyone. This is Mike Leiden here with uh, uh, my guest today is Tom Campbell. Um, I am a teacher and volunteer at the International Academy of Consciousness New York office and um, going to ask Tom a few questions about his upcoming talk at the first International Congress of Conscientiology, which is happening at the uh, IAC's research campus in uh, Portugal on May 22nd to the 24th, uh, actually just next month. Um, so the purpose of this Congress is to, so first off, uh, International Congress of Conscientiology. Conscientiology means consciousness science. Um, so it's a multidimensional paradigm for the study of consciousness. Uh, multidimensional means studying all aspects of the person. So that can mean studying the brain or, you know, as perspectives from neuroscience as they relate to consciousness, uh, perspectives related to, um, you know, out-of-body experiences or uh, certain psychic experiences that we can have, um, or uh, you know, mind-matter interaction effects. Any of these can be considered under uh, the the umbrella of this uh, multidimensional or post-materialistic model. So, um, uh, Tom Campbell. I don't, if, for those of you who are n who don't know who Tom is, uh, Tom is a uh, former physicist by trade. Well, you you are a physicist, I should say, but uh, yes. you you worked uh, for NASA formerly. Yes. Um, and uh, your 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 second life, let's say, was um, uh, you were one of the first individuals to work with Robert Monroe, kind of as a uh, protege. Would that be accurate? Yes, that's true. Back in uh, actually, I started both careers at about the same time. I started my first job out of graduate school uh, as a working physicist, and within. Several months of starting that job, I met Bob Monroe, who has just um, put up a laboratory to study consciousness, and he needed scientists to help him do the research, and I happened to be at the right place at the right time, so that's when I started researching consciousness. So that was, like I say, in early 70s is when that happened. Now, that was before there was a, a TMI, you know, the Monroe Institute. That was just Bob and I and a few other people who were engaged in studying consciousness. Gotcha. And so since that time, you've been having um, uh, out-of-body experiences, or now you, you would say just exploration of um, exploration of what, what you would call the, the larger consciousness system or other, other dimensions of consciousness that are just as, uh, uh, just as, as, as real as the physical. Um, and after about, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 30 years of research in that area, uh, you published the My Big Toe trilogy. That's right. Yep. Uh, being a physicist, when I uh, worked with Bob, my job was to figure out how did it work? What was going on? You know, what's the theory that will explain this? Some logical structure that made sense. And after uh, a year or so with Bob and Roe, out of body I could do whenever I wanted to. It was, a, it was an easy thing to do on demand. And I used that ability to do research in the non-physical as well as we were doing research in the physical. So I had both, both areas in which I could experiment and, and do work. And it's a hard problem. So it took me about 35 years or so of doing this research uh, in both places, both uh, realms, before I thought I knew enough about it to actually write it down and share it with other people. And that uh, that then happened, uh, I think, 2003. Gotcha. And, and so, uh, actually, the name of your talk is A New Perspective, in which you, uh, well, I'll read the whole title. Uh, in this talk, you're going to address some hard problems, but your, your talk is uh, A New Perspective, a theory of consciousness in which the hard problems of both consciousness and modern physics disappear as the informational nature of reality gains support within the physics community. Um, so just w without giving the audience, I guess, uh, without giving too much away, um, what, what question do you aim to answer in this talk at uh, the International Congress of Conscientiology? Well, what I'd like to bring to the table um, is that uh, consciousness, uh, as well as many things in physics, you know, basic things like uh, mass and charge and space and time, and there's a little longer list than that, but these are fundamental things, and they are also hard problems. Physicists don't know where, you know, time comes from. You know, what is it? Where does it come from? Why is it there? Then the same with mass, the same with charge. 
all of the most fundamental things in physics are mysterious heart problems. They have no causal chain. They just are. And of course, consciousness is the same way. Consciousness doesn't have a causal chain. You know, where does consciousness come from? You know, uh, what is uh, going on in an out of body you know, or in uh, these psychic experiences? What's the mechanism? What's happening? And the reason we have these heart problems and the reason that anyone ever ends up with fundamental heart problems is because we're looking at the problem from the wrong direction. It's a paradigm issue. Once you look at the problem from a more productive viewpoint, in other words, you, you modify your paradigm, then all these heart problems just disappear. And not only do the hard problems of consciousness disappear, but physics disappear and of philosophy uh, and theology. All the hard problems that uh, we've been scratching our head on for you know thousands of years suddenly become obvious once you have this bigger picture understanding of how reality really works. Right, right. So it's almost like you're saying that the hard problems almost exist because we're construing the problem in a certain way. In other words, if I ask a question like, well, how does consciousness emerge from the brain? And then everybody's working on that problem. It becomes a hard problem because that's the wrong question. Right. Well, yes, the question, you know, consciousness doesn't come from the brain. So trying to figure out how it does is, uh, is going to be a hard problem because there is no answer. So yes, we're only looking for answers in under paradigms or in places, you know, where no answers exist. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it a hard problem. And it's the same with the, you know, with the charge and the mass and the time and so on. They, they are hard problems because we're, we are making assumptions. We have beliefs and those assumptions and beliefs basically cut us off from a good uh, deductive scientific understanding. Got it. Um, and, and with regard, and so it sounds like you're saying that this is significant to consciousness research because you're, you're, proposing, a, you're proposing a paradigm shift. Yes. Is that right? So it's a paradigm shift that's different than, so it's, it incorporates quantum mechanics and relativity, or let's say maybe accounts for those, but is not, is not, uh, how can I say, it's not, it's not those, or it's not, it's not uh, under the materialist lens. No, no, it's not at all. Matter of fact, uh, I was as surprised as anybody being a physicist that uh, when uh, I finally thought I understood consciousness and how consciousness worked, and had an overarching theory of that, it, it took me by surprise as well that when I looked at it, I had you know, the exact same overarching understanding that I had derived for consciousness also explain quantum mechanics, also explain relativity. Why is C a constant? Uh, why uh, do particles, uh, you know, why are they really probability distributions? Which is what the science of quantum mechanics starts with that assumption that they're really not hard little massy product particles, but they're probability distributions. That's how they deal with, with, uh, with particles and things in, in quantum mechanics. So the whole, then I, I realized that the big picture I had of consciousness and metaphysics, if you will, actually derived physics, answered the fundamental heart problems of physics as well, and made the physics we have now, the materialist view of physics, became a subset and it still works, obviously. It's a subset, but it's a subset under the condition of low uncertainty. So where we are dealing with things that have very little uncertainty, then we can approximate objectivity and, you know, a material viewpoint. Just like, um, you know, with, with the flat Earth, as long as we're talking about small distances, well, a flat Earth is a good approximation. And just if we're talking about Newtonian physics, well, if it's not, if, you're, if your thing that you're trying to describe in Newtonian physics is going too fast or um, isn't, um, you know, too small, well, then Newtonian physics works fine. But if it is too fast or too small, then Newtonian physics breaks down. Well, if our science does start to uh, want to ask questions and understand things that have larger uncertainties associated with them, then materialism breaks down. So our, our physics became a subset 
of a larger understanding of the nature of reality, and it fit very, very well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, I, I'm tempted to ask a question, if it can be answered quickly, um, that uh, uh, so how, how does your talk relate to out-of-body experiences without, uh, you know, without spoiling too much? Well, you know, an out-of-body experience is a, an experience of consciousness, if you will. Uh, they're, they're related. Uh, obviously, you are conscious when you're out of body. That's why you have the experience. You know, if you were unconscious, you wouldn't have an experience. So consciousness and out of body are very much related. It's a it's a, an attribute of consciousness that it can explore, and by explore, I mean experience uh, multi-dimensional, you know, reality. Uh, these I call virtual realities. There's many different kinds of virtual realities, and our physical universe is just one of them. But they are all um, products of consciousness. They're all, um, you know, incorporated within this larger theory of consciousness. So as consciousness, you have access to all of consciousness. And that includes out of body, that includes the dream state, you know, uh, that includes uh, all of what people call this multidimensional reality. And they just give it that name because it's not physical. Therefore, it's this multidimensional reality. Well, we can understand that. You see, we know what out of body, what it's, what's going on there? What's the mechanism? Why do you get the things that you get when you study it? Why is it that people see and do and feel and report the things they do? And what does it mean and how can you re interpret it? And sometimes they're like where they can be near earth and they can see what's going on here in this physical reality. And sometimes it's very different than that. And sometimes there seems like there are multiple realms out there that aren't the same and have different aspects to them. And why is that? And where do they come from? And what are they actually, you know, what are they interacting with? What's there? Where does it come from? What's its origin? What's the causal chain that, uh, that leads to all of that stuff and that experience? Just like asking what's the causal chain that leads to our experience here in physical reality. When you're out of body, there's also a causal chain that leads to your experience. And if you understand how it works, then you see that, that chain and now the experience, instead of mystical or, oh, wow, I wonder what that means, you know what it is, where it comes from, and what it means. I see. So, so, uh, so your model explains uh, multidimensionality as well as, um, uh, you know, quantum physics as well as relativity theory. Yes. It, so it sounds really ambitious, and I'm really excited for the talk. Um, <laughs> and uh, I know that... Uh, that for, for those of you who don't know um, or are not familiar with with, uh, with uh, Mr. Campbell's work here, uh, Tom has written about an 800-page trilogy that explains this model, as well as uh, you've got several videos. Uh, actually, not several. You've got oh, over in the hundreds, right? <laughs> videos on well, YouTube. About 220 uh, yeah, videos on YouTube. Uh, ex explaining this work. And um, so if, if you want to learn more about that, you can look on Tom's uh, video channel on YouTube. It's TWCJRR44. Is that it? That's right. Okay. On YouTube, uh, or you can go to MyBigToe.com. If you want to learn more about the, um, the Congress at which Tom will be speaking in May, uh, you can look at the links below or go to icc.iacworld.org if you want more information or to register. Tom, thank you so much. As always, it's been a pleasure, and uh, I will see you there at the Congress. Great. Well, thank you very much. It's uh, always a pleasure. Okay.